Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this narration of the web series The Last Terran. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 7 Rix had reluctantly taken the water and slowly sipped it, clearly coming to some kind of terms with being the last of their species. Munter watched and continued working with the working frame on the available trinary locks. The coloration differential was a hint, but not one that Munter had ever come across before. Munter tried rescanning with the standard scanner, but got the same results as the initial scan had produced. Rex, prompted Munter. The Terran looked up. Do you have any templates for the Terran grade hardware scanner? Munter asked. I might, Rex swallowed heavily and took a long sip from the container of water. But even if I do, we still haven't worked out a wireless means of me getting it into your systems. I will begin researching that now. Do you have any information regarding the default wireless means of your device? Mantu queried further. I've got some default information I can bring up that might help her. Uh, I'm no tank head, so a lot of it's gibberish to me. But I know if my ship is up, I can talk to it and it can activate all the remote functions with it, Rick said, gesturing with the device. If I may say, the device appears to require multiple hands both to hold and operate. That seems highly inefficient. Mantu gestured at the device using the walking frame. Rix glanced at the walking frame and could see the Terran's eyes linger on the modified sensors grafted onto one of the manipulators which the Terran had described as creepy. Well, it's meant to be used on a tabletop, not the mobile use I have it for. But the newer tablets never suited me, and for where I'm going, was going. I wasn't likely to ever get it repairs, at least not from the company. I'll bet they have implantable hollow tablets that can outperform this old piece of junk by a thousand times over, Rick said seemingly downcast again. Munto didn't keep track of the organic technology use. On the rare occasions that it impacted tacits, it would typically be distributed via general templates announced and freely available for implementation. I am unaware of that related technology, but I would presuppose that the technology has substantially advanced since you have been in stasis. Munto concurred. Of course, sir. Being the last Terran, who knows if I'll be able to get use even the tenth of it before I bite it. Rick seemed to mumble, still a bit downcast. I could really use a beer now, or maybe even a few shots. Mantu checked the term shots against the lexicon, but I didn't like any of the definitions. I do not believe self-termination is an appropriate answer to this scenario, Mantu said flatly. Huh? I'm not talking about anything like that. I could just use a... maybe a little liquid courage, you know? Rick looked up at the screen, avoiding looking at the walking frame. Would the high concentrations of ethanol and or projectile weaponry not be sufficiently detrimental to your functionality to result in the cessation of functions? Mantu asked, surprised by the Terran's clear declaration of self-termination was not their goal. Um, when I say shots, I mean drinks, not guns. I'm feeling like I could really use a good drink, Rick said, setting their data device down and gesticulating a bit. Water is readily available, Mantu tried. Not that kind of drink, I mean a, a drink. Rick said, waving the hand slightly. You appear to be adding connotations to a given word as a matter of context for which I have none. Mantu felt a bit exasperated. Rick seemed to consider this for a long moment. Yeah. I guess I forgot for a second that you aren't a real person. Rick said, and then immediately appeared to start fumbling for his words. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I mean, uh, n not that you aren't a real person, but I, uh, I understand your meaning and I am not insulted. I would appreciate it if you did consider me as a, you put it, Real person, though, Munter said. I'll try. I'm not used to artificial or tacits or whatever the right term is. Tacit just seems a bit much, you know, Rick said. Munter tried considering this. Inorganic was technically accurate, but typically reserved for inorganic scent, who were very patently weren't tacits. Tacit, well, it simply was the correct means of address. Artificial felt like an insult, even though it was an express part of tacit had arrived of artificial intelligence. AI would equivalently felt like an insult. It would take Manto some time to think of this. Manto looked at that so far growing pile of items to submit for a longer term internal review being generated by this one Terran and grumbled internally. Planets and stars didn't generate this level of internal review. Why was a comparatively tiny organic capable of it? It was almost frustrating, and it served to remind Monto why they typically avoided organics. They, organics, were so often wrapped up in the meaning of words, phrases, connotations, and even philosophies of using particular language. It was all so inexact. 
and what made it worse was that it was almost constantly in a state of flux. Lexicons for a given species were almost constantly being updated, requiring visits from Tacit every few years, if not more often depending on the species. And even then, the lexicons were almost constantly found to be incomplete because of double meanings and changes within the related societies. Stars and planets, for all of their inexactness, were at least firmly bound by well-understood principles, and rarely did they change so significantly that they required revisiting more than once every few decades or even centuries. So, uh, if you were made after Terence disappeared, how was it that you were made? Rix broke into the Munter's contemplations. It wasn't an unreasonable question, but it still seemed annoying to answer. It was akin to enduring the questions of organic youth, also Munter was given to understand. I was formulated in a Terran intelligence mobile manufactory Indigo 49172, Munter said, and displayed an image of the facility on the screen. So like a... A von Neumann construct? Rix asked. This took a moment for Munto to query, trying to stay away from the Tacitnet databases. There was enough of a reference within the lexicon for Munto to compare it against. Not in the same sense as what was originally proposed, no. I am not intended to be equivalent manufactory. It would be possible for the manufactory to produce a replacement for itself if required, or if an additional manufactory was required, Munto answered. What was it called again? Terran Intelligence Mobile, Rick started, trading off. Manufactory Indigo 49172, Munter finished. So, to me, Rick looked somewhat amused. Yes, Munter said, either failing to get the joke or the Terran was intending or avoiding it deftly. Munter was never quite sure. Why Indigo? Rick asked. Without querying the database, I believe it is related to the class of mobile manufactory it is, Munter replied. Huh. I guess that makes sense. Just seems like a strange naming convention if you ask me, Rick said, looking over at the printer which had just finished a pre-cooked protein item that could substitute in place of the lab steak which had been recycled due to the lack of cooking means aboard Munter. Rick took it from the printer and looked at it. It looks like jerky, he said, and took a bite. Tastes like it too, but could definitely do with a bit more seasoning. Pretty tasty though. I am pleased to hear that you are enjoying the food. I've been unable to locate the Hydrax potatoes you asked about. However, I have been able to locate some cooked potatoes, which should be to your liking. I must warn you, though, that I am unaware as to whether any of the additives recommended with these will be detrimental to your internal chemistry or not, Mundo explained. No worries, uh, just keep a bath bag on standby. Or a toilet, Rix joked. Mundo considered these items from the lexicon. One appeared to be for consumed organics rejection, and the other appeared to be a means of organics waste disposal. The bath bag appeared to be used in times of incompatible chemistry or in times of illness. The toilet appeared to be involved substantially in Terran culture, in terms of history, humor, and standard biological behavior. Do you require a toilet? I do not have one aboard, and I'm not certain as to where I would place one, as so as to avoid issues, Munto explained. Now that you mention it, uh, I'll probably need one before too long. That chili cheese curry I had before we launched is uh, probably overdue. Rick's appeared to joke again. Manto looked around themselves, trying to figure out how best to proceed. What about my ship? I can probably get the toilets working over there, at least for now. There's not a very important system, so they have low-tech requirements. I'll bet I can make those work, Rick said, brightening a bit. Manto glanced back at the Terran ship, the Esperanto. It was as good a solution as there was available. Manto also glanced at the pile of gear sitting next to the airlock from when the Terran had boarded. Is your ship capable of sustaining you for long enough that it would not be detrimental to yourself? Muntu prompted. Sure, life support is always the most overbuilt thing on every vessel that I've ever been on. Well, except maybe you, of course. But then you want it built that way, you know, Rick grinned. Will you require taking your block samples back with you? Muntu asked, looking at the now more obvious different blocks at the table. No, but, but I can let you know if I do need them. It shouldn't take me too long either way, plus, sir. Uh, I can leave my scroll here with you so that you can see if you can figure out how to talk to it, Rick said, and started off down the passage. Wait, called Munter, and tried to follow as quickly as was normally reasonable with the walking frame. Much to Munter's surprise, the Terran was halfway down the hall already, and his head was in turning back to look back at the walking frame, and so came to a slight skidding halt in the hallway, holding the top of his head. What? Rick asked, appearing to rub the top of their head. 
Montefers considered the speed at which the Terran had just demonstrated as well as the collision that had also just happened. Monto could replay it in memory, so Monto focused on the present. Allow me to print up a new exosuit and support system for you. I believe yours to be in sufficient disrepair that you should not garb in it again, Monto explained. Rick seemed to think about this as Monto replayed the speed and the collision. The Terran was substantially faster than Monto had expected, and while the scan should have revealed this, it rather obviously hadn't. This meant that the Terran was not only faster than the galactic standard by a fairly substantial amount, he was also stronger too. And based on the Terran's earlier statement regarding the artificial gravity feeling low, Munter suspected that it meant that the Terran was used to a substantially higher planet's gravity well than the norm. Munter wanted to ask the Tassinet why this would be and why it wasn't common knowledge, but shrunk back at the thought, looking again at the private message indicating that they were to report immediately for repair. Munter took the medical scan and the little knowledge they had about Terran in front of them and quickly upscaled the normal exosuit of a similar organic and made the slight modifications the Terran would require for atmosphere as well as entry and exit from the exosuit. Once satisfied, they sent it to the printer. Sure thing, Em. I probably should have thought of that myself. Uh, guess it didn't really hit me that it's over 900 years old. Rick grinned and continued down the hall and picked up the helmet portion of the pile of equipment. Rex, prompted Manto. Yeah, replied Rix, seemingly lost in looking at the helmet. What are you doing? Manto asked, confused by the Terran's behavior. Oh, uh, just thinking. Hard to believe it all. I mean, uh, I never figured I'd be the last man alive, Rex said, turning the helmet in his hands. It is not impossible that you are in fact not alone, merely a statistical likelihood, Manto explained. Now, uh, see what you did there. That makes it worse, not better, Rix said looking around for some part of Manto to look at, presumably some ocular sensor. I am sorry, but that is the general consensus of galactic society that Terrans are, were, extinct, Manto said. I know, but you don't have to say it like that. You could have left it at me maybe not being alone. Some lost colony of terror somewhere, perhaps, Rick said, putting the helmet down carefully and picking up one of the gloves. The two existed in relative silence for a bit. I'm glad you insisted on the replacement suit, Rick said breaking the silence. Manta moved the walking frame next to Rick's, keeping the modified sensors out of obvious view. Oh, Manta queried for information. Rick held up the glove, which now showed the hallmarks of material failure at the joints, failures the Terran couldn't have fabricated in the last few minutes. Manta couldn't help but agree and felt some internal process satisfaction over having requested the Terran use a new exosuit. Bing! An internal chime sounded and Manto checked the printer. The exosuit was still printing, so that wasn't it. Manto looked at their tacit net link and saw another private message. Reply confirmation of order for repair or assistance will be dispatched. Failure to reply within 10 minutes will result in assistance being deployed. Local assistance, including search, estimated at 4 weeks. Manto looked at the message and tried to decide how to respond. Manto looked at the header. Except, there was none. It was simply a message which had arrived. In theory, that meant no reply could be made. Manto tried to consider what this meant. And then, just for the sake of attempting it, Manto drafted a short message in reply. Order received and acknowledged. Unit is underway following repairs of Organic's vessel. Define header for future clarity. The response was almost immediate. Repairs to Organic's vessel. Secondary consideration. Report for immediate repairs. Header request invalid. Manto looked at the answer, at the Terran, and then at the ship outside. There was more to this, but Manto couldn't quite figure out what. End of chapter. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.